Okay, and we're back. Something a little bit different today. As you all might be aware of if you watched the previous video, I am currently enrolled in the engineering program at Daytona State College, and I'm making an effort here to share some of what the curriculum is related to uh, electronics. So um, it's not an, it's not an EE degree. It's um, it's really more like a general engineering degree. It has more of an emphasis on civil, which is why I was interested in it. But uh, of course, you do have to take some electronics. So that gives us, you know, something to delve into and something to kind of, uh, you know, pique our interest as I'm going through this curriculum and I can incorporate that here. So this is what we have. This is our second lab. I should share the first lab. I will share the first lab. Maybe uh, it, it was a math review. Some of it's some kind of pertinent because it went through um, significant figures and you know um, conversions. You know, converting pico amps to milliamps and pico farads to nano farads and what have you. Um, so that might be of interest to some people that are are wanting to learn and seeing you know what kind of uh, like math skills, like practical math skills, it takes to uh, do some electronic stuff. Um, which is kind of why I, I do like this lab. Um, this course is going pretty well. It's still early on, but it is very practical. So again, that's why I thought I'd share some of this. And really what I'm doing here right now is I'm doing some of my homework. And I figure I'd clue you in on some of the homework here. So this is, this is lab uh, 1B. And it's predicated on using uh, multi-SIM. Okay, and I have my multi-SIM pulled up here. If you guys never use multi-sim, multi-sim is a spice program. A spice program is like an electrical simulator. So you can build circuits and it'll simulate them. You can get uh, data off of it so you can see current, voltage drop, uh, uh, maybe even impedance. Sometimes you could calculate the impedance. Uh, you'll get, you can put a, an oscilloscope on there and you can put a waveform on there and you can uh, measure the waveform and all that kind of thing. You can get frequency response. Um, some of them will even do um, FTT so you can get like a Fourier transform on there and and look at that kind of thing. Um, noise analysis, all that kind of stuff. So um, they're very useful. I've always used uh, LT Spice. I've never used a multi sim, so this will be a new experience for me. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it might. You know, you guys can watch me struggle through uh, using the multi sim for the first time. Uh, the difference between multi sim and P Spice, or not P Spice. Well, I guess now they call P Spice, right? LT Spice. Um, LT Spice is now, I think, Q Spice. I think they just came out with a new version, which I haven't, I haven't used yet. But uh, I'll, I'll have to try that out soon, and maybe I'll, I'll record that as well. Uh, but the big difference between LT Spice or Q Spice and and Multi Sim is that Multi Sim, and you'll see part of this what the project is here. Multi Sim allows you to put the instrument into the schematic, essentially. So. Like let's say for instance I'm using an oscilloscope. Well, there'll be like a figure of an oscilloscope that will actually be on the paper here physically, which I don't know where it is. I was I would do it. Um, I'm gonna have to figure that out, and I'll figure it out with you all here in a second. But that's the whole thing. So all the meters and the measurement instruments you put inside the schematic, um, and you, it has actual probes, and you'll probe at actual places on the circuit. You know, so it's kind of which I understand why they do this because right this is like a you know for people that you know are taking electronics for the first time and they can take it online without having a lab I actually have a lab in my house but I thought I was gonna have to use it but I don't because they're gonna use multi sim because it's easier than to get people to you know purchase a lab kit and then I don't know record their lab or do all that kind of stuff and then upload it they can just use multi sim and multi-sim replicates the you know the process of having a multimeter and having a an oscilloscope and what have you so that's really what the basis of this is uh, let me pull that back up so okay lab one the dates here is wrong I've been using this for probably a couple years here um, so it says learn how to use multi-sim learn how to measure current and voltage and determine their values um, and watch the video. So he has a video about multi-sim as well here.
OK. All right, so let's see what the objective is here. So it says uh, simulate the, simulate the circuit uh, given below in uh, multi sim for the following measurements. So basically, what we have here is just a basic resistor network. Um, it doesn't want us to calculate anything. All we're going to do is measure V1, V2, I1, and I2. So V1 is here, so he's going to want us to me measure the voltage drop or the voltage at this node here. Um, let's just give it a name. Let's say node 1 right here. So he wants to measure the voltage at this resistor, at this juncture here, and then uh, let's say node 2 would be here. Okay. Um, and this is going to use a 12 volt supply. Okay. And we're going to have to measure a voltage and current. And it says copy and paste the, the diagram uh, circuit that will result from the simulation in a space below marked as solution. Okay, so that's, that's just, it just wants us to put that on the paper here. No big deal. Make sure that all four instruments used to measure the voltage and current are shown in the diagram. So that's what I was talking about. See, so apparently it's going to use. I guess you can't get multiple readouts from a single instrument or however multi-sim works. So you're going to have to use one for voltage and one for current, one for voltage, one for current. So it's going to add up to four uh, different instruments there. Uh, brief explanation of the, of the circuit. And we just upload it to Dropbox here. This is where we want us to paste our solution and whatever. So, okay. Pretty easy deal, pretty simple, but the trick is going to be, let's see, so I need, the trick is going to be figuring out where these uh, instruments are. So I need uh, two 1K resistors, one 3K, and one 2K resistor. Okay, that's probably going to be where I'm going to start because I'm, I'm supposing that that's going to be the easiest thing to find. They're right here. The icons are very small in multi-sim. This is something different too. So in uh in 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 LT Spice, you're basically just gonna have you're basically just gonna have um, one kind of resistor. Okay, you just have like a uh, a generic kind of resistor and you just go from there a 2k this has all the denominations and values see I think I'm going to use that instead see I guess this is a certain part number for a resistor but I don't really want that it doesn't have to be that specific and it's just going to take up space on the schematic so let's see if I can Basic virtual. I'm just going through here just to. Okay. Oh, it has like these. You see, that's the thing. This is made to mimic like uh, like a real circuitry. So it has pictures here that I guess would mimic a real circuit. So it has you know virtual components. Basically, they're calling it some relays, not amps, and photo diodes and things of that nature. But hopefully this will work for the purposes that we've established here. So I need two of these, two of the 1Ks. They do have a lot of denominations. So in, in LT Spice, the way this works is that you would just you would just get a resistor and and you would you would put the the um, the rating or the value of the resistor. You just type that in yourself into the resistor itself um, oops that's the wrong one okay so that's my resistor let's see
And LT spice, if you press R, it'll rotate it. Oh, doesn't work. No, not here. So let's see how we can rotate this thing. Okay, so, oh, it's R. So we have to uh, press Control R, and that should, and that'll rotate it. Okay. Let's look at our schematic one more time just to, to okay. See if I can keep a mental image of that pretty good here. So that's going to go there. I'm going to have one of these here. No, don't change it. Don't change it. That's going to go here. Let's zoom in a little bit so it doesn't seem so small. No, I want to move this. No, whoops. Move that a little bit. This is going to go. Hmm. I don't know why this was a 1.0 and this was just a 1K. Maybe I did that on accident. So I believe that's how we had it. Yeah, that's it. So. There's our resistor network. Now, oops, I'm moving the. Not as easy to move as other programs I've used. Let's see. Oh, there we go, kind of. They all look to be on the same plane here. So, a wire connection is the next thing I need. Oh, and it's just automatic. Okay, cool. That's nice. It connects pretty well. So that's going to be node one, and that's the one where that's the node of interest. Um, now I need a voltage source. Uh, it's not going to be under tools. It could be. Someone here, you know, multimeter. Okay, so this is where all your instruments are. I know if I click on a resistor or any one of these, it'll bring back that library, and I can just go there. But, oh, here it is. There we go. Or is that not? Okay, that's a voltage probe, but that's not. That's a voltage probe as well. Looking for a voltage source. This is again, I told you, not going to be that straightforward. I'm going to have to struggle here a little bit. Um, here's a goal. Oh, place source. Okay. Now he had a battery. That's something more like that. I wonder if that's what he wants us to use. So here we go, power sources, now, I guess, I guess we'll use a DC power source like this, that should do, and it's already at 12 volts, so yeah, that was probably what he intended. Of course, he has a video on this, and I'll probably review it later on just to make sure I did it the way that they he wants me to do it. And for some reason, for some reason, it's like, what the hell? I'm sorry, what the heck? It's not wanting me to make the connection straightforward. That's very odd. Maybe if. Whoa. That's unusual. Let's see. 
No way. So let me see if I can do it this way. Okay. There we have it. So that just a little nuance there, but it seemed to work out all right. Okay, so now we have a multimeter here. So if we have a multimeter here, then we can put that, and I'm familiar with that symbol. That, that is like the iconic uh, multi-sim symbol. So I'm going to put both of these here next to each other. And then I guess you just have to set up the parameters in which you want them to measure. So it's kind of interesting. Like I said, I've never... I've never done such a thing, so do I just connect it or what? Or do we use a probe? Huh. See, these are the questions. Okay, because there's a there's a voltage probe. I wonder if you connect that to the probe. Hmm. See that I'm gonna have to figure out because I don't know. Okay, probe type. I look you can say voltage and current, look at that. But, hmm. I'm gonna see if we can uh, well that's what he said four, so let's just do that. Let's see if, how I can set this thing up. What happens if, okay, so voltage, direct voltage. But is it like connected to anything? How does it know that this is the probe? That's what I'm curious about. How does this know how to read that probe? Maybe it doesn't. I'm just gonna have to simulate this and see how it works. Let's see. See if I can run a simulation. Okay. So I got a voltage from the probe. I got a voltage from the probe, which seems to be very low. It's like negative one volt. That seems unusual. This is a DC supply. It's not supposed to be grounded. I don't think it needs to be grounded. Um, basically like a floating circuit. Let's see what he had here in the diagram. Oh, it is grounded. Okay. So maybe it does need to be grounded for it to pick up. So, which I think in LT Spice it needs to be grounded as well. So I have to end the simulation. Yeah, I believe LT Spice needs a reference as well. I'm actually not that surprised about that. Let's run simulation again and see what we get. Yep, 3.2 volts there. So that worked. But how do I get information from, you know, this is the thing is that having these leads just go everywhere I just feel like it's going to like look bad. You know. I'm gonna delete this. Stop and run. Oh, and then you click on it and then it shows you the voltage. Okay. So it does have to be connected. 
I wonder if you can which I, I know you probably can do. You can put little flags. So this is pretty simple. I guess I've already figured it out. It hasn't been too terribly like a voltage reference. This hasn't been too terribly bad. I think I didn't struggle as much as I thought I would with finding everything. Uh, what I'm looking for, however, is is like a flag so I can. Oh, look, there's vacuum tubes in here. That's pretty cool. What I'm looking for is a flag. So I can connect them. Connectors. Which I know, I know it's in here somewhere in the um, in the section with the voltage miscellaneous that was all the cool stuff it had all the different tubes and everything look at this lots of stuff in here optocouplers so oh wow look you can even have Wow, this is pretty powerful. You could even have a digit simulation here. So, here's the issue. <laughs> it's not really an issue, but it's going to have to be under source, I bet. I'm pretty sure, not the ground. But if I use one of these references, I'm pretty sure from there I can tell it what to do. Let's try that. So let's just try that. That might not be what I want at all actually let me take this let me take this and cut that out got to be a way to assign these things anyway I think I'll just leave that to my own exploration but you guys get the gist if I uh, if I ever find it out um, I'll upload another video I don't want to take all the time here but you see is if I if I just wanted to do it which I would consider the sloppy way would be to just hook everything up like this then that would give me the voltage and current. I would go to simulate, run, and then if I click that, that'll give me the voltage. If I click this, oop. Why are they showing me the same? That's odd. So if I click this, now it's showing me nanovolts. Very peculiar. because I turn this other multimeter on that is strange
why are they they seem to be working codependently like they're slave to each other for some reason that's interesting that'll have to be figured out let's see you know unexpected problem let's see if I can set this up to read both of them because as I recall somewhere somewhere in here I could read both of these let's see Oh, maybe I, oh, I have my current thing. Maybe that's why. I've got my current probe. Oh, I know exactly why that happened. I've got this, oops. I've got this set up wrong. I'm, remember, I guess this is like a real life simulation here. So I've got my current wire. I basically just made a short circuit over here. So the way to do this would be to go here and here. I'm sure, see you could just put a current clamp on this and that would have been fine. But he wants us to use the multimeter, I guess. So, you know, all kind of different ways to do this. We could do that. And we'll put that current clamp there. Okay. Oh, oh well, now that that makes sense. Huh. So, measuring the current, which is eight hundred microamps, it's actually having it's putting a load on the voltage, which I guess is realistic. I just didn't think it would it would do that so much. Now let's see what I have out of the clamp. I don't see that the clamp is giving me any information. Let me run this thing. Stop the simulation, start it again. So I don't know where the clamp is supposed to display its information, but that worked. I really don't want to leave it like this because I think it's very, very ugly. And now if I were to set this up, I'll actually put my current meter here. Whoops. Oh, I mean, what a circuit. Doesn't that look nice? Okay. So I should have my three. And now it's measuring different again. It's got a different load on it, I suppose. There it is. Now, see, I probably want to do the math on this one just to figure out to see what it's actually supposed to be. Let's see if this current clamp is messing with anything. I'm going to run the simulation again. No, it looks right. So, this is what we're getting so far. We're getting 3.75 volts. Here at node 1 with 3.775 nanoamps. And 
and then 3.75 volts here with 3.75 nanoamps. Now I'm going to have to look into this to see how he wants it connected. This seems very odd to me. It would be, to me, it's actually a lot easier. Let's see if I can just do this. Okay, there's a there's a shortcut for stopping and starting the uh, simulation right there. But to me, this would just be a lot easier without even using these deals. I'll leave them there because that's what he wants you to do. But if I just showed you for a second, I mean, if I were doing this myself and I was genuinely just interested in what the values were, let's see if I can get that back. Kind of, not really. Okay. So if I were doing this myself, all I'd really probably do is take this and take those probes. There's one here, voltage and current. You can put one probe there, uh, which is this is the one, right? Yeah. No. Okay. And I would take that, then run the simulation. doesn't look like it's giving me anything for some reason. Let me check my connections here real quick. There's a connection there, there's a connection there. Okay, so it's actually touching. I guess it's if it's green, it's actually touching. Hmm. Maybe if I put it there. Okay. There we go. So we do get 3.2. We do get... Now this thing is telling me it has negative 800 nanoamps. 2.4 volts on the second node. It's kind of screwy, guys. Kind of screwy. Of course, I'm probably doing something um, wrong. They wanted me to use the multimeters, which I will because that's what it asks for. Um, Uh, look at I have all these things. Hopefully that doesn't interrupt it. Let's see. Let's pause. We'll run that again. No. Still have the same numbers. I mean they're pretty close to what the multimeter gave me. It's just the uh, the amperage is a little off. Interesting. Oh, this is supposed to be a 2K, not a 2.2K. 2.2Ks are actually <laughs> much more realistic, though. That's uh, tend to be more common. Well, let's change that. So I wonder if I can just type the value. Looks like I can. Okay. Now let's run this simulation. I do get some different numbers. Looks like the uh, amperage went up. Oh, everything went up. And I'm actually going to take this out too, just for uniformity's sake. Oh, the simulation is running. Okay. 
That shouldn't have done anything. It doesn't look like it did. All right, well, that's the project. I'll just dial this down, make sure I'm doing everything right here with this, uh, with these multimeters. I won't use the probe. I won't use these probes. I'll hook my multimeters back up um, and figure out a way that it's not so messy to to make a to measure these points. I think maybe if it's is it the probe? Those are probes there. I wonder if there's a different style probe I can use. Anyway, this is Lab 1B from the electronics course at Daytona State College for the engineering program. If you have any questions or if you have any more advice for me on this one, if you guys are into multi-sim or have used it before, you got any um, answers about any quarks here that might be able to uh, assist me in these projects, I would... Uh, be much appreciated. I'll see you guys soon with more content. Have a good one. Okay, so I just went back basically to just do it how I intended to in the beginning. It seems like that's just the way you have to do it. Um, I couldn't find uh, any like labeling device where I could label the nodes without having to have the wires. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. And you know this is not an exhaustive assignment it's pretty simple so I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it but here we go here's the circuit all I have to do is take a screen capture of this paste it on the the doc form and then give a circuit description and then that's all there is for the uh, part two of the first lab for the uh, electronics class here I'll keep you guys updated on anything else I find interesting there's actually another book that I'm using for this class that's actually really good and I'll have a review of that as well it's not Grubbs book it's not the Grubbs basic electronics it's a circuit analysis book and uh, I think you guys will enjoy that too so I'll upload that uh, pretty soon here and just stay uh, in tune for more content I'll see you later